Okay, hello. Okay, I already show you how to design the boost converter. If you miss it, miss the video, you can look at the description. There is a link to go to the research guidance. So we continue on the simulation of the boost converter. So of course you need a MATLAB to do this. Okay. So the first thing you need to do is when you open the MATLAB, of course, you have to change the address. Okay, make sure you change the address to the location that you. Okay, so let me click here. So maybe I just open in the desktop. I make a folder here. Okay, A A A research. Okay, so just click here. Okay, select folder. Okay, make sure you don't run in the C program file. Okay, if you run it in MATLAB, the MATLAB can broke. So make sure you change the address first. Okay, this is very important. Make sure you change the address first. Then you can open the MATLAB, go to home, and then simulate. Okay, it will be take a, a long time to run. Okay, and then. Uh, create a blank model. Okay, so depending on the version, mine is 2019B. Okay, some version are a little bit different, but are almost the same. So create a blank model. Okay, now you have a simulating file. So I suggest you save it first. Okay, it automatically open to the AAA research, the one that you set. Okay, so you can rename it. For me, I just use Untitled. Okay, then you go to the library. Okay, you can see here, this is your simulation file. This is your library. So, you have a simulating library here. Okay, you have a lot of okay, block. Okay, so you can use, uh, mostly you can, you use this. Okay, so you have sync, sync mean output, source mean input. Okay, you have mathematical model here, math operation. Okay, and a user defined. Maybe you can use this. Okay, signal routing. Maybe. Okay, usually you will use this because this is the main library, the simulating library. But for your case, if you do a, a power electronic, okay, especially power electronic, okay, I suggest you use. You don't use this. Okay. When you search this, you search every library available and it will get confused. You cannot share library, okay? Some library you can share, but uh, some library you cannot share. So, I suggest you open the, for the power electronic, you go to the Schemescape, Electrical, okay, Specialized, okay, and then Fundamental, okay? Everything that you want to use, you use it here okay you can either you click one by one or you just go to the MATLAB okay go to the MATLAB and you just type power like means that you only open power library okay so this is the power library It's the same thing but it is just focus on one library okay so depend on you you can use both Okay, so the first thing that you need to do when it comes to simulation with the simulating for power electronic, you have to grab the power guy. This is just a calculator for the power electronic, uh, sim, uh, this library. Okay, grab this and then you have the source. Okay, you have the water source. Okay, and then you have the element. Okay. For the resistance inductor and capacitor, okay, you choose the series branch. Okay, this one contain RLC, resistance inductor capacitor. Okay, go back and you look for the power electronic. You have diode. Okay, you have MOSFET. Okay, this one is the MOSFET, and then you have the of course, when it comes to boost converter, you have the PWM. Okay, when you want to do the PWM, go to the pulse and signal here. 
and then don't choose the sawtooth choose the PWM generator okay they already made it for you you just use it okay and then go back two times and then how about the measurement you look at here okay you can measure current you can measure voltage okay and additional you can measure Fourier mean okay usually for power uh, this one you use this okay for the boost converter we measure the mean value okay so if you use okay this is for the AC okay maybe you can use inverter you you simulate inverter you use this RMS okay THD okay that's it then you have to adjust everything so this one you need three okay just press control and drag it and automatically create a copy and then control r select first control r then you can rotate okay so this is r out so r out Okay, set it first. L. Oh, this one is C. C, this is R. Oops, sorry, this is L. Okay, so you have this and this. And then you have the MOSFET. Okay, make sure the drain and source is correct. Okay, the drain is at the upper side. The source is at the bottom side. Okay, make sure you be careful. Okay, and then you have the diode. And this one. Okay, can you can see here there is a M or E. Okay, E is the measurement. You can disable it. Double click, show measurement port, disable. Okay, usually we don't use it. Okay, so measurement port disable. Okay, and you can see here there is a snubber. If you don't like snubber, you just double click at the power guy. Okay, go to the preference and disable snubber. Okay. Now you connect it. Okay, drain source. Remember, make sure it goes from drain to source. If not, your system cannot work properly. Okay. okay, maybe you want to measure the output voltage and the inductor current. Why? Because the output voltage you want to measure the ripple factor and of course the inductor is the continuous current. So let me adjust this. Make sure you choose the correct positive and negative. Okay. So adjust the capacitor. Okay, so you have the average and then this one is the PWM pulse width modulation you go to the G the gate the pulse go to the gate okay so this one you just put anything anywhere okay and then you can use this one simulink library remember you have input here which is the duty cycle you go to the source Go to the constant. Okay, maybe your duty cycle is 0 0.5, 0 0.25 maybe. Okay, go here. Okay, remember that you have two duty cycle. Okay, go to the signal routing. Okay, maybe you can choose a manual situation. Okay, if you have two signal. This is just an easy way to switch. Okay, if you want to switch, just double click. Then it 
it means to switch. Okay. And then don't forget about the frequency. Okay. Frequency is okay. If you remember back, this you choose thirty kilohertz. Thirty zero zero zero. Or if you afraid you make a mistake, just E three. Okay, means that thirty kilohertz. Okay. So also you have to set the mean. Thirty E three. Okay, so you have made the simulation. How about the output? The output you go to the remember source. Okay, source uh sync is the output. So go here. Okay. Okay, we want to measure the actual instantaneous voltage, not the average. For average, we just put the display. Because the average usually consistent, okay. Because we want to measure the ripple factor, so double click at the scope, okay. Make it double, go uh, click here, okay. You put two, then you change the layout, okay. You have two, okay, two graph. So adjust this, maybe this one put at the second. And then the first one is the this one. Okay. Then for the graph, of course, every if you do research, make sure you label it everything. Okay. Okay, the upper side is the Inductor current. Okay, this is a standard. Okay, you show the actual value. Okay, the actual term, then the abbreviation, comma abbreviation, and then in the bracket is the unit. Okay, always show like this. Okay, this one, cause configure properties. This one is the output. Voltage V out V. Okay, so make sure you label it. Okay, and of course, it is better if you change it to white background and darker. Okay, so darker plot. So, figure change to white, as this change to white, this one change to black. And this one you can change it to red. So apply it. Okay. So if the line I think is okay. So number two. Okay, you can change to blue. Apply it. Okay. Okay. Before you simulate, of course, you have to set up the solver. Okay. Okay. If you okay, if you figure is something like this, if you want to make it full screen, you just press space bar. Okay. So if you do like this, press space bar, it will automatically adjust. And you go to the modeling, simulate model setting. Okay. Go to the solver, variables are uh, set. Okay. Okay, auto for the maximum start size, make sure you change it to 1E negative 6. Okay, make sure you change this. Okay, and then of course, go to the simulation, simulation time, you change it around okay, 0 0.01. Okay, 0 0.01. Okay, you can adjust it. Okay, uh, okay, let me run this. So after I run this, press this run, and then I get this graph. So you can see here, this one is too early. Okay, the rule of thumb is uh, the transient, which is the change, 
needs to be one third of the graph and two third is the steady state which is the unchanged part so means that you have to increase this uh, simulation time to maybe this one and again okay this one is okay because one third is a transient and the rest is the okay the rest is this one okay so if you want to adjust this okay adjust this okay using this one okay you can see the oh yes i forget to insert the design okay now we insert the design okay you can see here the duty cycle is 0 0.286 and another one is 0 0.444 okay so the inductor of course you choose this one okay so 1.39 okay inductor and then the capacitor 7.3 3 to enter and the resistance is you have two resistance okay 326.667 okay so this is for the this one and if you change it to 405 you just double click there okay so of course you want to analyze Okay, the ripple factor and the uh, the ripple factor here, the output voltage and this one, and then of course the inductor current. So I run this again. Okay, you can see here the inductor. Okay, you press this, you can zoom in. Okay, you can see here it doesn't go to zero means that it is continuous current mode okay and how about the ripple okay so the ripple doesn't have meter inside the simulating library so you have to do it manually okay let me show you how okay so you have to go to the end and zoom in okay don't forget to choose this eh? when you choose it it will come blue Okay, again, zoom in, zoom in, okay, and then you um, disable this, the zoom, okay, you can choose many tools, yeah. okay, and you go to the ruler, okay, if you look at the ruler, you have one and two, okay, so you can look the maximum which is around this part and the minimum is around this part so the difference is you can see here theta y is 5.911 negative 1 so means that okay creation okay so the maximum and minimum is 0 0.5911 and then you can see here the average value is divided by 139.2 then don't forget to multiply by 100 so this is the formula okay to calculate the ripple factor okay the difference of voltage okay maximum and minus minimum divided by average this is the average again multiply by 100 so if i use the calculator okay is 0. 5911 divided by 139.2 multiplied by 100 you get 0.42% ripple factor okay because the, we designed it 1% lower okay you can see here uh, why we uh, where is it yeah this one so 0.01 means that 1% so if you look here it is lower than 1% 
So let me record this uh, 0 0.42. 0.42%. How about if I change the load to 405? 405. Okay. And then you have to switch this. Okay. And then run it. Okay. Again, this one, you just press this, automatically adjust. Okay. Okay, you can see that if I zoom in, it doesn't reach zero. Means that both load is continuous current mode. Okay. So how about the ripple factor? Maximize it first and then click the magnifier, zoom in. Okay. And then adjust the ruler okay unclick it and click it again it will go inside this okay and don't forget to disable it and then adjust it okay if I adjust it here so you can see the second one is Annotation 0 0.995 okay, divided by 178.9 okay, the average output voltage multiply by 100 so if I use the calculator 0 0.995 divided by 178.9 multiply by 100 so equals to 0 0.5 oops sorry okay 0 point equals to 0 0.5 point okay. 0 0.556 0 0.556 so percent so both of the design is good okay how about the power so right now you can use the mat operation okay you can go here power is multiply okay mat operation go to the multiply or product okay and of course you need to have another current okay just click it control drag it you get a second copy so let me cut this. Okay. So I have this one and the uh, voltage. And of course you have you need to have the average power. So control copy it. Okay, this is the power. Okay. And of course, average. Average of power. So another one is the average of voltage. It is better for you to label it properly. Okay, let me let us look at the first one. The power should be 20 watt. So I run this. Okay. The power okay so the input voltage we don't change it so if you look here the input voltage should be 50 okay so you have to make sure be careful eh? here okay if you run it again okay of course the output voltage is 20 okay uh, 90 okay almost 90 okay because of the non ideality remember in the in that in the capacity MOSFET you have the resistance okay fat resistance and in the diode you have the forward voltage okay so make sure okay this one the power make sure you check everything 
make sure it follow your design specification okay and of course you have to check back the ripple factor okay so if you look here you have to calculate back the ripple factor this one is wrong okay so make sure you check everything so this is how to simulate boost converter okay how about if you use okay you go to the if you want to change this to pv okay of course you have to go to the foundation here uh, okay go to the library uh, renewable okay solar okay you can drag the pv array okay so you have to disconnect this okay and then connect this And of course, you need to have a capacitor. Okay. So, almost the same. Okay. You just insert this. And then, you can choose what solar you want. Okay. And then, you have to download the calculator. Remember that I said if you want to use PV, the design is much more different. You have to download the calculator. Okay, let me run it. Here is the code. Okay, you have to open the M file. Run it. Okay, if they ask this, change folder. Okay. So, you have the software. So, the calculation I will show you later. Okay, that's it. See you again.